Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. Microsoft is busy finalizing the next optional bug fix update for Windows 11 22H2 KB5026446 in the release preview channel. And um, the release preview channel insiders are finalizing and testing the update before it rolls out shortly to the stable version of Windows 11 22H2. Now, although this is a bug fix update, this is also the next Moment update for Windows 11 22H2, known as the Moment 3 update, which will bring the third wave of new features uh, to the Windows 11 operating system if you are running version 22H2. So this is going to be a massive update which will bring numerous new features, improvements, add-ons, changes, and bug fixes. And we'll be rolling out, um, it's in its final stages of testing, so it will be rolling out, I would say, in the fourth week of this month, April 2023, starting most probably the Tuesday of that week. Now, although uh, this will be a massive update, bringing lots of new features, and we have looked at a whole lot of these features previously when they were still uh, in the dev channel and the beta channel, they've now moved to the release preview, so they are undergoing their final stages of testing. Although these uh, features um, will be rolling out, Microsoft says they will be planning to gradually roll out the following new features and, enhance and enhancements for devices that install this new build. So this will be an optional update, which all the updates that roll out near the end of the month are. And if you do decide to install uh, this next update, and um, if we just head over to Winver quickly, the current OS build is 2261.1702. That will bump the build up to 2261.1776 or somewhere in that vicinity. Now, um, although the features will be gradually rolled out, according to Microsoft, they also say that if you head over to your Windows Update page and you toggle on this setting, which was added to Windows 11 22H2 recently, get the latest updates as soon as they're available. Um, that means that those updates will arrive on your system um, sooner than later, even though they are on a controlled rollout. So that will uh, bring the updates as soon as they are ready to your device. So if you want to get those updates sooner than later, make sure this setting is turned on. Now, um, just to dive straight into this, because there are numerous new features rolling out with Moment 3. So if you are interested, just stick around, and I'm going to get through this as soon as possible. And I'm going to be using the stable version um, just for a point of reference for this video because obviously the features haven't rolled out to my operating system yet and this is by no means a comprehensive list because microsoft could change this when the actual stable version update does roll out now um accessibility live captions uh gets um some new features and add-ons when it comes to languages the update adds live captions for the following languages um chinese simplified and traditional french france canada german Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, Brazil, Portugal, Spanish, Danish, English, Ireland, other English dialects, Korean. So a couple of live captions and um, support for more languages rolling out. And when it comes to voice access commands, which is part of your um, accessibility, there's quite a lot going on with voice access um, commands and voice access in Moment 3. The first of which, the update redesigns the in-app voice access command help page. Every command now has a description and examples of its variations. Um, the update adds voice access command support for the following English dialects. English United Kingdom, India, New Zealand, Canada, and Australia. And then the update adds new text selection and editing voice access commands. And um, just to mention one of those um, examples, if you want the operating system to do this, as an example, delete all the text in a text box, you just say this, delete all. So lots going on with voice access and voice access commands. Moving on to the next new feature, and um, this update adds a VPN status icon, which will be a small shield into the system tray. It displays when you are connected to a recognized VPN profile, the VPN icon will be overlaid in your, in your system's accent color over the active network connection, which I think, as I've mentioned previously, will be a nice move in the right direction, especially if you do use a VPN. And then something I posted on yesterday, and the update will also give you the option to choose to display seconds in the system tray uh, clock. And that will be a setting in the actual settings, which if you toggle on will show settings in the system tray clock, which by the way is, believe it or not, a very highly requested feature for Windows 11. And I posted a video on how to do that yesterday before the update arrives. 
and um, it's just making one or two registry tweaks. So if you want to go check that uh, video out to be able to enable seconds in the assistant tray clock before moment three arrives, then I'll leave that in the description. And then just to mention the next new feature, the update provides a copy button for you to quickly copy two-factor authentication codes. Um, these are in notification toasts you get from apps installed on your PC or from phones linked to your PC. Microsoft says, though, um, that this feature only works for English, so just take note of that. Now, if we head to the File Explorer, and I have mentioned this um, previously, but just to go through this quickly, um, the update will add access key shortcuts to your File Explorer's context menu. An access key is a one keystroke shortcut. You can use it to quickly run a command in a context menu using your keyboard. Each access key corresponds to a letter in the display name for the menu item. And I actually think if you are using your keyboard and the context menu, that's going to be a nice move, as I always say, in the right direction. Then just to mention another one, mainly um, aimed at enterprises and system administrators. Uh, it will also add multi-app kiosk mode, which is a lockdown feature, which lets system admins specify the apps that can run on a device. And then if we head over to the task manager, um, it's also going to in introduce live kernel memory dump collection from the task manager. So using the LKD feature, you can gather data to troubleshoot an issue while the OS continues to work, also mainly um, for system admins. So as an example, if you right-click um, on a process, there will be a live a kernel memory dump option available now in that right-click context menu. And then moving on, because there's quite a lot to get through, guys, this is going to be a major update. Um, the next is, um, if we head over once again to our settings, and we head to our time and language typing, and we scroll down where we get language and region, and we head to typing, and touch keyboard. Now, um, the update replaces the settings for show the touch keyboard when there's no keyboard attached. Um, it's the setting over here. And uh, um, basically, the, you're going to get three new options. You're going to get never, when no keyboard is attached, and always. So that's, this is going to be replaced with those new options, as mentioned. And then this time, if we head over to settings, system, display, there's going to be a new section called brightness and color. So if you click on that, um, the update will enable content adaptive brightness control, CABC, to run on laptops and two-in-one devices. The feature dims or brightens areas of a display based on the content. And as mentioned, um, this will be found um, in the new brightness and color section. And the drop-down menu gives you three options, off always and on battery only. So that's... Um, enables content adaptive brightness control to run on laptops and two-in-one devices. And then the next one is if we head back to the Bluetooth and devices page, um, USB, there's going to be a new USB for hubs and devices on this page. And it adds a USB for hubs and devices settings page, which means you can find it on this page. And this new page provides information about the system's USB 4 capabilities and the attached peripherals on a system that supports USB 4. And just take note, though, Microsoft says if your system does not support USB, obviously you will not see those settings appear on this page as mentioned. And then uh, um, the next one is if we head to the settings privacy and security page, um, you're going to get a new option on this page called Presence Sensing. Um, it adds a presence sensor privacy setting on this page. So if you have a device that has compatible presence sensors, you can now choose the apps that can access those sensors. And then a couple more to go, guys. Um, uh, the update also improves the performance of search within settings. So if you are using settings and search, uh, you're going to get some performance improvements to that, which I actually think is needed in Windows 11. And what else? Um, the update changes the default print screen. Yes, I've, I've, folk, I've, I've posted a video and focused on this before. The update changes the default print screen key behavior. Pressing the print screen key opens the snipping tool by default. You can turn this off in settings from settings accessibility keyboard. And I'll leave a link I actually posted on that down below, which will give you more information. And that one has actually been met with a lot of controversy and debate. But nonetheless, go check that video out. And then three more to go when it comes to new features. We are almost there. 
And uh, this is another important one I've focused on, um, which is to do with multitasking. So if we head back to the system page, multitasking, when it comes to the Snap Windows feature, um, the update introduces a limit now of 20 most recent tabs uh, in the settings multitasking. This affects the number of tabs that appear when you use Alt and Tab and Snap Assist. So you, instead of getting all tabs, you will now see 20 most tabs when you install the Moment 3 update rolling out shortly. And then the second last one, um, the update improves the cloud suggestion and the integrated search suggestion. This helps you to easily type popular words in simplified Chinese using the input method editor IME. And then the last one, um, if we just head back to our accounts page, on this page, uh, the update provides the full amount of storage capacity of all your OneDrive subscriptions. It also displays the total storage on the accounts page in the settings app. And then over and above that, guys, we get numerous bug fixes, too many to mention in this video. And um, because we are already um, quite over time, but I'll leave a link to those release notes in the description if you'd like some more info. And that's what's happening in the release preview channel. Um, that update, KB5026446, which will be our next Moment 3 update, bringing the third wave of new features to Windows 11 22H2, should be rolling out over the next couple of days. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.